breaking news coming out that it is revealed when the retaliatory strikes by Israel will come against Iran. Now, this comes as we've actually received word as well that over the past week or so, over the past couple of days, there have been two nights where Israel was planning an attack and they aborted. And now they have changed the schedule. And I'm going to be sharing with you the latest that's coming out on this as we are awaiting, the world is waiting to see this response as Iran has launched for the first time an attack against Israel. It was the largest drone attack uh, in history against Israel. Uh, there was drones, there was cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, 99.9% .9 of them shot down, did not arrive to their destination. There was only a couple that broke through. And I shared with you before that a lot of people were saying that this was actually the Iranian cucumber attack was what was being vocalized in the Middle East at the lackluster show that came from Iran on this attack. They declared it a victory uh, and Israel said that they must respond. Now, we had President Joe Biden and several other nations saying, claim it as a victory, as there was essentially no damage, no harm done. But Israel said, if we do not respond, it will send the message that in the future, Iran can simply attack us and we will not do anything. So they said that they will be responding. Now, we had heard initially that it was leaked out information that it could be happening within the next 24 hours of the attack. 24 hours had come and go. There was no response. Now we've received information as to when exactly we can expect to see this. Now, in addition to that, a lot of people are saying that this could be the start of World War III. World War III has been trending uh, on the Internet. People are searching, concerned about what's unfolding as especially after the warning that came out from the Colombian president who said, this is the prelude to World War III. What is unfolding right now all over the globe? Now, in addition to that, we are seeing articles coming out left and right. And also, I'm going to be sharing with you as experts in the last 48 hours have been chiming in on anticipation for World War III coming with everything that's unfolding. Uh, this keeps popping up right now. Concerns of us entering into a global conflict as the United States uh, is involved in several different conflicts with Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Hamas, now Iran, and also anticipation for China and Taiwan as well. All of these a building at this time. So I'm going to be sharing with you the latest information on this, letting you know exactly when this is going to be happening, because we've heard that when this retaliatory strike does happen, Iran has already said, if you strike back, we will hit you and we will also hold you in the United States accountable. So we are anticipate we are anticipating this is going to be happening and there will be an escalation. The question is when and how will this unfold? And like I said, more updates coming up on this. I'll go ahead and share with you the latest. Skymaster messages are being broadcasting, says Sandy Fetty. Thank you for the $2 super chat, Sandy. I'm not really sure what that means, um, but uh, I appreciate the $2 super chat, and I will continue to keep you and everybody up to date. I see we've got about 1,500 people with me live in the room. Do me a favor. Please hit the like button if you appreciate the updates. Um, and all the articles I'm going to be referencing, they are linked in the description below, along with resources to help out you and your family if you are looking to prepare for what's unfolding, taking all the necessary precautions to be ready for anything as cyber attacks we've heard could be coming to the United States along with other attacks, physical attacks, as we're hearing that they're crossing the southern border. Uh, they're already here. We're hearing about various cells in different cities that are simply sleeping, ready to wake and attack with an orchestrated, coordinated attack simultaneously to wreak havoc on the United States, along with shutting down our water systems, electrical grids, our airports, our communications. Uh, and so if that happens, I have resources for you and your family here on the channel as well. So do me a favor, hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to stay up to date. It's totally free. Why not? And also newsletter free, those resources available. And if you're somebody that needs prescription medications, you want to have some backups just in case, we also have that available as well. So with that being said, though, let me go ahead and get you caught up on the latest. I'm going to be referencing the ABC News live updates that have been coming out. And I've seen this verified from several different sources. They're actually letting us know when we can anticipate this Israeli strike. Now, we had also heard that there would be a lot of support if Israel were to hit back Iran, retaliate sooner rather than later. But what you're going to be hearing here is that this is likely going to be happening later rather than sooner. Uh, now, Israel was not initially planning this. However, let me give you the details of what is coming out. Uh, Sandy Fetty, $5 super chat. It means the U.S. bombers highest alert message broadcasting. Yes, 
we are on high alert. Thank you for that, Sandy Fetty. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't understand the uh, lingo that you were using there. Uh, prepare, 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 says Seth. Best show on, Steve Ram, says Randy Matthews. Thank you for that. Um, yes, I appreciate the kind words. Let me go ahead and get you guys caught up with the latest that's going on. I see we got 1,750 people in the room with me live already. So this coming out with the live updates, Israel, Gaza live updates, Israel. They've aborted two strikes that they were planning against Iran two nights this week. So already, as I mentioned, first we had heard it was going to be coming in the first 24 hours. This was leaked information. Now we're hearing that is not the case. Uh, thank you for the $5 super chat, Gary Shreve. Everyone that is glad Trump is not in office must be pro-war Trump time in office. There weren't any new wars started. That is a great point, Gary. And I think a lot of people would agree with you. If you agree with Gary, put 45 in the comments. If you disagree, put 46. But I think a lot of people are thinking that, you know, uh, uh, that former President Donald Trump might have been handling this a little bit better. Now, this article coming out from ABC News says that Iran on Saturday night, they unleashed a retaliatory strike against Israel, sending a volley of more than 300 uncrewed drones and missiles towards targets throughout the country. Israeli military officials said all but a few were intercepted by Israel and its allies, including the United States, officials said. And also, in addition to that, we heard that Jordan, Saudi Arabia, several of these Muslim nations uh, actually shot down these drones as well, showing their lack of support for what it was that Iran was doing at that time, sending over that largest attack that Israel had ever seen. The attack on Israel came more than six months after the Hamas group invaded the country on October 7th, after which the Israeli military Again, it's been bombardment, bombardment of the Gaza Strip. Now, here's what we have. Iran's attacks on Israel by the numbers. It says Israeli officials said that the country's Iron Dome defense system endured a big test from Iran's attacks on Saturday. They intercepted 99% of the over 300 threats of various types thrown at Israel. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Corps, Guard Corps, according to Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson Daniel Hagari, launched 170 unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, more than 120 ballistic missiles, and more than 30 cruise missiles in the attack. Hagari said that 99% of the threats launched toward Israeli territories were intercepted, a very significant strategic achievement. Hagari said that the attacks resulted in only one known Israeli casualty, a 17-year-old girl, who a seven-year-old girl who was severely injured when she was struck by a shrapnel, apparently from the intercepted missile. Now, in addition to that, here is the information as to when we're going to be anticipating to see this Israeli response, the retaliation attack. This coming out today, it says Israel is not likely to carry out a strike until after Passover U.S. officials have said. Now, I had heard this coming out, rumored as well. Now it looks like it's coming out in the news media outlets official. And they're saying that this is because they want to give the Israeli people a time to worship for Passover, to be able to relax, to rest. And then after Passover, it's on. Israel is unlikely to carry out a strike on Iran until after Passover, a senior U.S. official told ABC News although that could always change. So this, you know, is flexible, but they're saying at this time, they're not expecting it till after Passover. Now, Passover, as you know, does not align with Easter and all the stuff that's going on this year due to the, uh, uh, the, the calendar scheduling, the leap year, the leap month that they have with the uh, Hebrew calendar. So it's coming essentially a month after uh, when the United States celebrated Easter. So Passover begins on Monday, and then it ends after nightfall on April the 30th. So April the 30th is when Passover will officially be complete. After Passover, they're saying that is when you can expect to see an Israeli response to what is unfolding uh, in the Middle East. The Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and other leaderships are still on high state of alert, with some in safe houses and underground facilities, officials have said. Now listen to this. Israel has aborted strikes against Iran two nights this week, uh, sources have said. So they were anticipating striking early. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we had heard initially that they were going to be coming out in 24 hours. Now we're hearing that is not the case, and they're actually going to be delaying. Uh, Madison, thank you for the $2 super chat. It says, we need you now, Trump. 
And I saw all those 45s pouring in of all the people that agreed that it was time for former President Donald Trump to step in and take control. A lot of people saying that they feel like that would be better for our nation if 45 was in as opposed to 46 and how things are currently going. Now, do me a favor. I see we've got almost 2,000 people live with me in the room. Please hit that like button. If I could get uh, 50 more people to hit the like button, we can get that up to 900 likes. That would be awesome. Now, listen to this. Israel prepared for and then aborted retaliatory strikes against Iran on at least two nights this past week. Three Israeli sources have told ABC News. Iran attacked Israel with more than 300 drones and missiles on Saturday night into Sunday morning local time in Israel. Israel has been weighing how and when to respond to Iran's attacks since then, holding war cabinet meetings on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Anita Pupo, thank you so much for that $5 super chat. You are awesome. I appreciate the support. Iran, Iran attacked Israel with more than 300 drones and missiles on Saturday night and into Sunday morning local time with Israel. Israel has been weighing out their response. Now, the members of the Israeli war cabinet are, are Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Ministers Benny Gantz, and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Now, a range of responses they have been presented to the Israeli war cabinet. The potential responses include options ranging from attacking Iran's proxies in the region, but not on Iranian soil, to a potential cyber attack, sources have told ABC News, and I've heard this as well. I've not yet confirmed it, but I've heard a lot of people saying anticipate cyber attacks coming from Israel to Iran, shutting things down. And they're also talking about the oil of Iran. They're saying that they could hit that. Let's actually not physically attack them like they did to Israel, but let's knock out their infrastructure for their economy, for their resources. Let's cripple them for what they have done. So we will see. Let me know your thoughts. Instead of launching missiles and attacks, maybe doing some uh, um, behind the scenes cyber attacks, hurting them in in the pocketbook, hitting their economy. Now, there was no war cabinet meeting on Wednesday, but Netanyahu told his government cabinet that while he appreciates the advice of the allies, Israel will make our own decisions and the state of Israel will do everything necessary to defend itself. And we had also heard that Benjamin Netanyahu disregarding the the comments from President Joe Biden, who was saying, just consider it a win. Just take it on the chin and walk away. They launched 300 missiles at you, but there was no damage done. Just simply de-escalate the situation by stepping away. To which they said, we must respond. If we do not respond, this will be a sign of weakness. And also, too, they said, what would the United States do? What would the United States do if a neighboring country, let's say Mexico, suddenly launched 300 missiles at the United States and we shot all of them down? There were no casualties. Only a couple landed, say, in the state of Texas in empty fields. And there was one loss of life. Would the United States just take it on the chin, count it as a win since there was no damage, and not respond? What message would that send? Let me know if you agree with Benjamin Netanyahu. Put yes if you agree with Benjamin Netanyahu that there must be a response or this will show as a sign of weakness and the United States would respond if it was done to them. Put yes if you disagree and you think no, you agree with Joe Biden that Israel should brush it off. Put no in the comments. I'd be curious to see what people think. A lot of people saying yes, that the United States would respond uh, and that Israel needs to respond, that they cannot just go ahead and let this be done. And I've actually heard other people vocalize that uh, if they allow this to happen, it's kind of like uh, the schoolyard bully, so to speak. Like if they hit you and you do not respond to that, then they're going to get the impression that tomorrow at lunchtime they're going to come and they can hit you again and you're not going to do anything. You have to stand up for yourself and your people uh, when you're entrusted to be the leader of a nation. Benjamin Netanyahu vocalizing this as well. Uh, so let me let me let me know your thoughts. I see lots of yeses coming in. I'm seeing a couple of no's. I'm seeing Colvina Sewell. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, hitting that join button. Uh, she's putting yes as well. Um, lots of yeses. I'm seeing Harry Vollmer saying big no. Tolk39 saying no. Um, but I'm seeing Elvin, Dolores saying yes. Laura saying yes. Oswald saying yes. Johnny Goocher saying yes. Shelly, Lisa, yes, yes, yes. Um, so a lot of yeses coming in. Um, very, very interesting. A lot of yeses, a couple of no's. Now it says that they're going to be 
Wayne, what is the best response to all of this? Uh, there was no war cabinet meeting, as I mentioned, but they said, we're going to be making our decisions and the state of Israel will do everything necessary to defend itself from the attacks of Iran. So we are going to be seeing how this unfolds. Now, a lot of people are saying that this is the entrance into World War III. We heard the Colombian president after these attacks say, this is the prelude to World War III. This is the preview. We are on the doorstep. This is going to be unfolding. Uh, and as I mentioned, trending across social media right now, World War III, it just shot up to 100% in the trends that everyone right now is looking up. Are we entering into World War III with all the conflict that is taking place? Well, there has been articles coming out on this left and right. And actually, I've got an article that came out literally uh, in the last 24 hours. Experts are weighing in. I'm just going to cut to the chase for you right now. There's about five references in this article. Four of the five say, yes, we are on the doorstep of World War III. The first one says doesn't think that we're quite there yet, that we're okay. The other four are saying, brace yourself for what is coming. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think that we're on the doorstep of World War III? If you think so, put a three for World War III. If you think no, put a four for no. But I'd be curious to see how many people are going to be putting threes, thinking that we're actually right there. If you agree with the experts that are saying this, Wow, I'm seeing all threes. I see two fours so far, but a lot of threes pouring in. People saying we are on the doorstep. Now, in addition to that, do me a favor. I see we've got almost 2,000 people with me live in the room, 1980. If you have not yet hit the like button, please do so. If I could get 70 more likes, uh, we could get 1,300 likes. I would appreciate that a ton. It just helps spread this out further so more people can get the uh, updates as to what is going on. Now, let me go ahead and share with you this article that's going to be giving some various expert opinions on this. And some of them are very interesting. They take different perspectives as to uh, what they think is happening with World War III. Now, this article says that in a world that has grown more dangerous in recent years, the nightmare scenario of a third world war is in the public conscientiousness. Earlier this year, UK Defense Secretary Grant Sharps warned that the world could be engulfed by wars. So we have UK Defense Secretaries warning about a world war as well. He warned that the world could be engulfed by wars involving China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran in the next five years and said that we are moving from a post-war to a pre-war world with a third world war. Now, the relief felt at the end of the Cold War in the 1980s has been replaced by an increasing alarm at Russia's invasion of Ukraine and these outcries at the humanitarian catastrophes in Gaza. Sky News spoke to experts about whether World War III is a possibility and if we really are living in a pre-war world. Now, here's what they had to say. Now, as I mentioned, all of these are saying, yes, we are on the doorstep. There was one that said no. Let me read for you the one that said no first and let me know if you agree. The international order is fraying, this expert said. Hugh Lovett, senior policy fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations Think Tank. The reassuring news is that we are not heading towards the Third World War, he said. While there are conflicts, intentions, and various threats, Ukraine in the Middle East, Asia Pacific, these are all separate and not connected, according to Mr. Lovett. The Gaza war has been going on for the past six months and is driving regional escalation. Iran's retaliation against Israel is just the latest example of this. There are implications for the international community, including the UK, for example, in terms of the Houthi attacks and the Red Sea shipping and the impacts that has on global trade. There is, he says, a risk that British troops become sucked into a conflict with the Middle East. We need to see these risks in a certain context, which is they do impact the UK, but they are not existential risks. Now, this is also happening at a time when the international order is fraying. It is under considerable strain right now. This is something that we should be very troubled by, he said. So he said that he does not think that we are going to have a third world war at this time. However, he did say that... Um, that the world right now is fraying under the pressure and the restrain with all of the conflicts taking place. So that is one no. Now the rest, they are all yes. Here's another one. More likely now than at any time since the end of the last world war, Deborah Haynes from Sky News Security and Defense editor said, given the scale and the turmoil shaking parts of the globe, in particular in the Ukraine and in the Middle East, the potential for a spark that would ignite 
a third world war, it already exists. That does not mean an escalation to global confrontations is inevitable. So she's saying that we are moving in that direction, but it doesn't mean it has to happen. There is still a way out. But it is arguably more likely now than at any time since the end of the last world war. A decision by Iran to launch an unprecedented barrage of missiles and drones against Israel has just raised the stakes even higher. Israel has vowed to respond, though its allies, including the UK and the US, are arguing restraint, especially as they helped ensure the vast majority of the incoming munitions were blasted out of the sky before they could cause harm on the ground. Should Israel choose to retaliate, and we heard that they will be, and I just share with you when they will be as well, the crisis could yet be contained if its return strike is limited and any further Iranian response triggered by such an attack is also curbed, but they are two big major ifs. Now, also, every time even limited military action is taken, there is a risk of error or miscalculation that leads to uncontrolled escalation to regional war. What happens in the Middle East also has a global impact. And I shared with you that video footage yesterday as experts were saying that there is a misconception that uh, one conflict in the Middle East is restrained to the Middle East. They said it spills over. And I shared with you, I showed with you all of the protests that happened on the 15th uh, in San Francisco, where they blocked the bridges, in New York, where they were burning the flags, uh, in Chicago, where they were also blocking the streets and protesting, and they were chanting uh, just stuff against the United States and Israel. It was absolutely incredible. This is without a doubt spilling over into the United States, and we are getting pulled into this as well, especially because Iran is backing is now being backed by Russia as well. So the United States backing Israel, Russia now backing Iran, saying that Iran has a right to defend itself, and they will support Iran, and if anybody attacks Iran, Russia will back Iran and support them in their attacks. And it has close ties to China as well. So literally, uh, the, the enemies of the United States at this time, Iran, Russia, China, all are allies. Now, while Israel's strongest ally is led by the United States, and we are predominantly uh, their main one, this Western nation, it means that the crisis pitches authoritarian states against democracies, just as the concurrent war in Europe does. Despite vows of Western support, Russia is slowly gaining ground in Ukraine. Western allies are failing to deliver the weapons and the ammunition to Ukraine's military that it needs, leading to an almost inevitable retreat unless the balance of military strength on the grounds change. Success by Vladimir Putin in Ukraine may embolden the Russian president, whose country is on a total war footing right now, to test the strength of NATO alliance by invading member states. Again, this would create a direct war between authoritarian Moscow armed by Iran, North Korea, and also with assistance from China against the West's NATO alliances. Evidence that military force, uh, military force has proved effective against Western powers could further harden China's resolve to make good on a pledge to reunite with the island of Taiwan with the mainland, even if that means invading it. Such a move could also plunge Asia into conflict, again, along the same dividing lines of authoritarian states versus democracies. And we've already received this warning. We've heard this directly from China. We heard China say that um, the United States... We have compromised your infrastructure systems. Uh, we have had our cyber uh, groups infiltrate your infrastructure systems. And at any time, now that we have them compromised, we could shut down your water, your transportation. We could shut down uh, your electrical grids, communications. All of these could go down. We heard of at least two dozen various systems that were compromised. The only ones we heard specifically was California ports, Hawaii water systems, and the Texas electrical grid. Those were on China's radars that they said that these were ones that were compromised. The rest, we don't know. We just know there was at least that. And then we heard a warning from the FBI director, Christopher Wray, saying that it's actually multiple times more than they had originally anticipated. So just imagine that various infrastructure systems, an unnumbered amount across the United States, they are currently compromised. China letting us know that they did this. Now, why? 
because they told the United States that over the course of the last five years, we have been planning this because we will be attacking Taiwan. And when we do, if the United States interferes in what is going on in the Pacific, then we will hit you before you can try to interfere. So a lot of people saying that we need to prepare for potential cyber attacks that could be coming from China as a result of them vocalizing this to us and letting us know there will be a war coming here soon between China and Taiwan. We don't know when, but we do know that that is going to be coming. So now is the time to prepare. And as I mentioned, I have those resources available for you linked in the description uh, if you are interested in those as well. Now also, uh, diversion, atten diversion of attention. This is another expert. Edward Arnold, senior researcher for the Royal United Services Institute think tank. I think people really need to understand what the North Atlantic Treaty is, which is the foundation of NATO. Mr. Arnold argues that the public seems to believe that NATO's Article 5 would send all of them automatically into war if one nation is attacked. That's not the case, or certainly does not have to be the case. Escalation is not automatic, and there are measures to de-escalate things. Looking into the situation with Ukraine, where NATO has been providing weapons and assistance, he says the risk of miscommunication between the West and Russia has increased. The chances of a miscommunication where one ship accidentally fires on another, I think this is going up. We need to really prepare about what this means, he said. So we got another one, concerned about the conflict between Russia and NATO and saying that could be the thing that leads us into World War III. Donald Trump could undermine NATO, another expert says. Dr. Luigi Scazzari, a senior researcher fellow at the Center of European Reform, said it depends on your definition of World War III. A possible conflict between Iran and Israel has the potential to expand into a major military Confl conflagration in the Middle East with global implications. So again, they're saying that this is going to have a global impact. What's happening? Uh, people thinking that this is isolated to just Israel and, and Iran uh, are mistaken. This is spilling over. The U.S. would almost certainly be drawn in on Israel's side and other Western countries, including the U.K., may do the same or to a lesser extent. But their involvement would be limited and this would not be World War III, not least as Russia can ill afford to support Iran and because China is unlikely to. So they're saying that we can avoid World War III, but that would depend on the involvement of Russia and China with Iran. If they're not able to afford going to war, then we could essentially avoid it. The impact of such a conflict on Europe would be primarily economic, they're saying, through further disruptions in energy flows and trade. The primary pathway to World War III scenario remains as direct Western clash with Russia. That scenario will be more likely if Donald Trump wins and undermines NATO, tempting Vladimir Putin into an attack on the Baltics. Wow. So this particular individual is saying if Donald Trump and Russia clash and Russia, he is saying, is the key element to World War III. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Who do you think is the key element to a potential World War III? Is it Russia, China, Iran, put your comments in there. Let me know which nation you think would be the one that would kick it off. Uh, a clash with Russia would also be quite likely if the Western forces become involved in supporting Ukraine in the frontline combat roles as well. Now, we had also heard that as well directly from Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin saying that if anybody were to join sides with Ukraine in attacking Russia, that they would declare war against them, that it would be all out official war. I'm seeing a lot across here. I'm seeing Iran. I'm seeing China. Uh, I'm seeing Israel. Uh, a lot of people I'm seeing Joe Biden, Ed Strove and Bob are both saying Joe Biden is what is going to cause World War Three. I heard a lot of people say that I, I, I had heard them vocalize that as well before that. A lot of people were criticizing former President Donald Trump saying that if he got into office, that we would certainly walk right into World War Three as a result. And now a lot of people saying that we actually had peace during his time. And now that Joe Biden is in office, we are actually closer to World War Three than we have ever been before. Um, so very, very interesting, but you guys, 
Uh, that is what is coming out right now in regards to World War III. It is all over the news and social media and the internet right now. People concerned with what's going on. And we're also hearing that there will be escalations with the retaliatory strike from Israel. That is going to be coming. And as I shared with you, we got an update as to when that's going to be. They're saying keep an eye on Israel and Iran after Passover. They wanted to do a strike within the first 24 hours. They have aborted two potential strikes that they were planning in the last week. Now they're saying that they're actually going to hit the pause button they will have a retaliatory response after Passover to give the people of Israel a chance to uh, celebrate the Passover. Then after that, there will be a response. Israel saying they must respond to this. Otherwise, it will be a show of weakness and send a message that Iran can just go ahead and attack them and they will do nothing. So, yes, Wake Up is saying after Passover, after Passover now is when we're hearing that the attacks will take place. And a lot of people saying that is when things will escalate. When we could be looking at, as we're seeing all over the internet, the searches are increasing for the term World War III. I'm seeing Brian Cooper saying that this is Revelations 2.9. King Dre saying this is Revelations 2.9. They won't give the real plans away, says Mission Possible. Yeah, you know, I've thought that as well. It seems like some of the information, you know, uh, what we had heard was that there was actually leaked information between the United States and and Israel. And I, I read that Israel was not happy with that. I wonder if that had something to do with the change of plans uh, to attack. Maybe that at this moment, Iran is ready for an attack. We're hearing it's leaked information that uh, they're going to attack. So maybe Israel is going to wait um, to hit them when they're not as prepared to have more of an impact and send that message that they want to send that you cannot attack Israel and get away with it you will feel the repercussions uh, of what is uh, uh, of attacking the United States and really making it clear to them and the surrounding nations, what they call the ring of fire, all the nations surrounding Israel uh, that are threatening them, letting them know, sending that message. If you mess with Israel, we will respond. We will not let you hit us and there and have no uh, retaliation. So we will see. I will keep you guys up to date, but that is the latest coming out on it. Um, and let's see here. And Iran is going to hit back, says Com Comdant Proc. Yes, uh, we have heard that Iran has already said they will hit back. And they also said that they will hold the United States accountable as well for their support in Israel. So we will see. Ali is saying, when is the Passover? The Passover will end uh, April 30th. So April 30th is the last day of Passover. Then after that, as we enter into May, uh, it's game on. We could see an attack from Israel. And we're also hearing various uh, rumors about what the attack could consist of. It might not actually be a physical attack. It could be a cyber attack. Right now, we're hearing that that is, it seems like the weapon of choice of the nations as we are in what we're hearing is the prelude to World War III. So we will see, you guys. Um, things are definitely intensifying, though. Uh, with everything that's going on in the Middle East. And we're seeing, hearing that there will be a retaliation. And as I mentioned, World War III trending all over the internet right now, hearing it more and more across the board. And experts now weighing in on whether or not we're at the doorstep of World War III. Now, do me a favor. I see we've got over 2,000 people in the room. I think 2,050 people. Do me a favor, hit the like button. If I could get 300 people that have not yet done so that appreciate the updates to do so, we could get that over 2,000. That would be awesome. Uh, and like I said, I will keep you guys up to date. Elvin is putting those cucumber uh, emojis on there. Yep. Uh, they're calling this Iran's cucumber attack because the missiles that they sent, they said were old. Um, they were bulky. They were slow. Uh, yeah, they said that it was not a good showing for Iran. Uh, as I mentioned, several nations, including the U.S., uh, have called for Israel not to retaliate because they said that what unfolded with Iran was so poor that they said to consider it a victory. Now, although we did hear that Iran was saying that it was a victory and Iran was saying it was a victory. Why? Because they said that those slow old uh, cucumber missiles that they sent, uh, those drones, they said that they were so cheap that they were actually valued at only $100,000 each. Um, so you can do the math, 100,000 times 300 something. 
uh, it was not an expensive attack. But what we heard was with the Iron Dome, with the arrow defense, with David Sling, with all of the defenses that were used by Israel, that they they used over a billion dollars just to defend themselves against those attacks. So Iran was considering it a victory economically that they allowed, they caused Israel to um, waste a lot of money defending against their garbage attack, essentially. Um, they considered it a victory, but we will see because a lot of people, a lot of other nations not vocalizing that, feeling like that attack was a poor showing of what Iran has. And this is the first time that Iran actually stepped into the forefront. All this time, they've been essentially attacking Israel with their proxies, with these, these groups, with Hamas, Hezbollah, all of these groups, they're actually funding them, providing them funding coming from Iran. And so a lot of uh, Israeli leaders saying they're actually glad that Iran finally stepped from the back from the, 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 uh, from the background to the forefront because they're saying now it's time for us to go ahead and get cut off the head of the snake, address the actual source of the conflict, and that is Iran. So uh, we will see. Uh, what's going to be unfolding here as uh, this is going to be happening. They are going to be hitting back. Um, and uh, we've already heard them say that when Israel does, that there will be a response from Iran, that they will retaliate as well. As a matter of fact, here is a quote that I have. Top Iranian commanders warned Israel on Sunday <clears throat> that the country would face a bigger attack if it retaliates against the overnight drones and missile strikes, adding that Washington, D.C. also they have been told not to back any military action from the allies Israel. Our response will be much larger than the one that unfolded uh, uh, from the military action. If Israel retaliates against Iran, Iran's armed forces chief of staff, Major General Mohammed Bagari, told the state TV, adding that Tehran warned Washington, D.C. So they're sending threats to Biden and the United States as well that any backing of Israeli retaliation would result in U.S. bases being targeted as well. So they're also pointing at the United States, threatening us, saying, we're going to hit your bases if you uh, get involved whatsoever. And they said, if the Zionist regime, Israel, or its supporters demonstrate reckless behavior, they will receive a decisive and much stronger response, Iran's president, Abraham Rassi, said in a statement. So... Iran, in addition to that, throwing out the threats. Um, so, man, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, but, yeah, they're saying that Iran finally stepping to the forefront as they have essentially been attacking Israel through these proxy groups, uh, funding them. And now Israel saying now we can go ahead and cut off the head of the snake as Iran is the source of the funding for these rebel groups. Uh, so, you know, very, very interesting to see this happening uh, and Israel giving their time for their response and people saying that this could be World War Three. So, man, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but a lot unfolding. I will keep you guys up to date. Make sure that you know exactly what's taking place. Uh, Kathy saying, Steve, you are an excellent reporter. Thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that a ton. Steve, do you think that Iran will go after uh, nuclear plants, says Connie Hill? Connie, I'm wondering if you're mentioning uh, Israel, uh, if Israel will go after uh, Iran's nuclear plants. I've heard that that could be a possibility as well with the Iranian deal, uh, nuclear deal as well. Zach says, Steve, for president. Thank you for that, Zach. Appreciate that. Maybe we'll make a run in uh, 2028. We can do Ram Zach 2028. Uh, uh, Trump. Uh, World War III is already a few months ago, says o Oliver. Yeah, we've heard that as well. A lot of people saying we are already there. It's already here. Some of the experts saying that as well as I read those for you. A lot of them saying that we're pretty much on the doorstep. But you guys, that is the latest. I will keep you up to date. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to stay up to date. I'll keep you up to speed on everything. Thank you for joining me. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.